Welcome to the Minor Student Athlete Fisher. We have Will Hayes from the baseball team joining us. And Will, how are things going with you and your preparations for the coming season? Yeah, well, thanks for having me here today, John. Um, things are going pretty well, uh, besides the fact that I hurt my arm about a couple months ago. Uh, threw a relay throw from, I uh, received it from center field, throwing it home, and uh, had some pain in my elbow. So I've been rehabbing that, uh, but I plan on being back for the season. Uh, unfortunately, I've gotten back into the weight room and can do those, so that's been that's been nice. And now we got our minor challenge starting up tonight, so that's exciting. Well, unfortunately, the injury also kept you playing in the Fall World Series too. Then. Right. But you know, how do you feel after the you know what you saw after during those you know three games and all that? And you know, it's a lot of good teams for the team and all that. I mean, how what drew your impressions after what you saw those in the series? Yeah. Yeah, I think our team has a nice balance of uh, some returners coming back and then some young guys that are going to have to step up and uh, play a big role for our team. I think uh, top to bottom, we just have a lot of excitement to get out and play the game we love. Uh, so I think that'll really drive us to be a good team this year. And then as always, I think our team chemistry is always really good. So both on the mound, or all on the mound, in the field, Base pads and hitting. I uh, always got room to improve, but also see a lot of good things. Well, obviously, number one, we scored a lot of runs in those games, too. Yeah. So you kind of saw a lot of good things out of the offense and all that. Is there anything else that really impressed you with the team during the World Series that you had? Oh, yeah. I would say you highlighted it there. We found a lot of barrels and, uh, yeah, just really showed that we can drive the ball on top to bottom in the order this year. I know from your own personal standpoint, though, it was disappointing for you, I'm sure, not to get to play in those World Series yeah, games. And really kind of almost piggybacks in some way to last spring when the pandemic hit and our season got cut off after 15, you know, 15 games mm -hmm. last year. And really at that time, we were starting to play well, too. We were starting to kind of pick things up a little bit there. And we had won a series of Rockers. We won several last eight games going into what was going to be a series of Bellarmine and just didn't get a chance to play it. And I know there was a lot of disappointment right there when that did come around last March. Yeah. Yeah, there was. Uh, there was definitely a sense in our team that um, we were coming together and starting to play our best ball. I think we had a sweep leading up into Rockhurst, and then we took two of three at third place. Uh, it was a really exciting last game. Uh, and uh, I can remember, too, on the bus ride back, uh, we got, I think it was Qdoba, maybe, or Chipotle. But when we got our box, we're supposed to have uh, cookies. We're all supposed to each get a cookie, and we didn't. So Coach stopped the bus and, and went in and, and made sure we got our cookies. <laughs> and so I think our team coach was at a real high that we all celebrated. He came back, we got our cookies, we got the series dub headed home. So... Yeah, definitely a big shock when a few days later it's like, yeah, your season's canceled. <laughs> it, it took a couple weeks for it to settle in that it was kind of reality. Because yeah. at a point in time when it happened, there was still a chance we can get back on the field maybe a couple of weeks later. But yeah. it turned out they ended up, you know, canceling the remainder of the season at that point. So mm -hmm. it was certainly a big shock to everybody in the ball club. And, you know, we didn't get a chance to play any more baseball that spring. Yeah. Now, in your case, how did you work around matters with the pandemic and all that, and going back home to Terre Haute and all that, and mm -hmm. all that? What did you do to kind of keep yourself, you know, ready to play this fall? Yeah, I uh, went home, and uh, it was nice to have home cooking uh, again, and um, spend some time with my mom and dad. Uh, actually, we got into a nice groove watching Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune, so uh, it, it made actually the Alex Trebek uh, passing, you know, may he rest in peace. It was um, more sad for me than it would have been not having the pandemic, and also, I, I hooked up a handstand challenge. No idea really why that started, but I uh, learned how to do a handstand. Proud of that. And then, um, yeah, I came back here to Rolla, and I got a job working at Gray Circle in St. James, which is a behavioral health clinic for kids who've gone through some unfortunate circumstances. Uh, and I really enjoyed that job. Still work part-time now and got to work with a couple of ST football players, too. So it was nice to get to know some other athletes. Um, then on the weekends, got to work as a bartender as well at Fugitive Beach. So... You know, I made the most of my summer here in Rolla, uh, but I was definitely excited to get back and uh, get to hit field and practice with the guys this fall. Because really weren't able to do much baseball wise during the summer, so you know, really was when you yeah. got back out there when the team, you know, got back to the start yeah. of school, you could really get back on the field again and do some stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, they didn't even really let us get out to use the facilities. It was all shut down in the summer, so Bear One softball, give them a shout out. They had some <laughs> open cages there to get some throwing and hitting in. And a couple games of slow pitch softball. I don't know if that helped my baseball or not, but <laughs> yeah, I got, got to try that out this summer. Now you came in as a freshman, and you were redshirted your first year. You're kind of in an unusual situation. We'll get to that here in a second. But yeah. you came as a fresh, you know, your freshman year, your redshirt freshman year, I should say. And you were on a team that had a lot of veteran players, a good ball club, kind of in place already. And you guys won the, you know, share of the conference regular season title that year and all that. Kind of how was that experience, just kind of coming in as a freshman, and you know, getting to play the redshirt freshman, and all that, you know, with a veteran ball club like that. Mm -hmm. I would describe S&D baseball team as, you know, a family. 
And uh, the way I can really paint that picture is my freshman year. One of the first weekends in the fall, uh, the older guys just said, hey, our door's always open, come on over. And went over there and they said, we're gonna go shoot some clay pigeons down by this by this river that we have outside and hop in the back of the truck right in the bed. So I was like, all right, you know, there's no hazing really going on. They're just gonna have to go shoot some guns. So <laughs> did that and just off to a great start there. And, and it just continued throughout the whole time. So uh, getting to know the older guys and building connections with them. And then uh, also my freshman year getting to travel with the team and uh, just, you know, chart pitches, um, be yelling, read, runner, things like that, being part of the dugout. It made it so when it came time for my redshirt freshman year, I really felt part of the team and, and ready to get up there and play with them. Now, like I said, you're a little bit in an unusual situation. You're a fourth-year student here, but because of the redshirt year, plus, you know, getting the year back, that, you know, the SCAA granted the year back for, mm -hmm. you know, the student athletes that were affected last spring by the pandemic. You're actually a sophomore in eligibility right now, which is a little bit unusual, but you're still one of the veteran players on the team. And, you know, you can take a lot of that stuff that you learned as you were a freshman. Now you can pass that on down to the younger players on the team you're coming right now. Right. Yeah, like you said, I, I had a position where I was the only really young guy on a, on the starting lineup my redshirt freshman year, and uh, now I'm one of the returners back. So that's a different scenario, but uh, I've, I've appreciated this leadership role I have now. Um, and I've seen a lot of excitement from the younger guys, and, just a lot of raw potential in them. So it, it's fun to kind of harness that a little bit, show them uh, how to do things. Um, but then at the same time, they, they keep me going as well. And uh, I don't like when anybody tries to say I'm old. You know, I kind of like that sophomore because I feel like I'm just as young as them still at heart. I guess maybe not in my arm because it's starting to break down, but we'll try to preserve it as much as we can. They say you're old, how old you feel you are, so. Yeah, exactly. Now, um, tell us a little bit about your baseball background. Um, what got you got started in the game and kind of what led you to come to Missouri S&T? Yeah, um, so my brother, he's seven and a half years older than me. Uh, he played college baseball at Ohio State for a year and then finished his career at Indiana State. And uh, we had a Riley ballpark. We lived in Riley Township outside of Terre Hill growing up. We had a ballpark about half a mile from our house, and my dad was always an umpiring or coaching there. Um, so they, they always tell the story that I put on his umpiring mask, and I was, like, behind the screen calling strikes and balls at, like, three years old or something. So... Yeah, the game's always been really important to me, uh, just growing up and hanging out with my buddies at the ballpark. So uh, I'm, I'm blessed to still be playing the game now and got this year and next to make the most of it. Now, what made you decide to come to Missouri s and Yeah, Yeah, um, I'd say the, both the combination of having a competitive baseball program and then a distinguished engineering program. I, I know that I wanted to study engineering and wanted to play baseball at that competitive level, so I was... Uh, really great that the opportunity presented itself to make it happen. And now you chose the mechanical engineering route for your major and all that. What made you decide you went that direction? Yeah, uh, math was always my favorite subject growing up. I really liked that uh, X equals feeling, uh, getting that correct answer at the end. And then my junior year in high school, I took AP Physics. And I remember my professor throwing a tennis ball across the room, and then he drew up all the equations with kinematics, showing how he could tell how fast it was going, where it was going to land. And uh, that just really stuck with me. And the possibilities that engineering opens up in a career someday are uh, basically endless. So I really like that. And uh, specifically with the mechanical, I think it, it opens up the most opportunities. What's interesting also is we had our, our World Series here a few weeks ago. You probably noticed they had the, um, the individuals over here actually had the, the Doppler and all that stuff. So you can kind of see that. So did you get a yeah. look at any of that? Yeah, I did. The, like, uh, I guess like flight of the ball, the spin rate, things yeah. like that. I was like, man, we just get this? And the coach was like, no, they just offered to come do it for free. So it was a nice little luxury to have for a day. We kind of get to see, you know, kind of what, you know, mm -hmm. what your pitchers were throwing and, you know, how right. hard balls come off the bat, things like that. And there's definitely, a, I guess, a little bit of a, you know, maybe engineering and sports could be combined someday in a job. So another opportunity there. Well, thinking of, you know, past graduation, what are your plans, you know, after graduation? Mm -hmm. uh, so this summer I'm still searching for an internship. I've been in the interview process, so hoping I can get one there. Uh, kind of learn uh, what I like to do as an engineer and uh, what, what skills I can bring uh, to the table. And then from there, hopefully work for a, a larger company at, at first and uh, have, a, have a role being an engineer. Then maybe someday uh, obtaining my MBA and uh, having more of a managerial role within a company. That sounds good, and uh, certainly appreciate your time here at Will, and good luck in the coming season. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.